The theme of body horror remind us of the power art has to evoke a visceral reaction and delve into the darkest parts of the human psyche. This interest with the macabre isn't confined to fiction. In different vignettes of history, there are real-life horrors that echo the grotesque imagery found in works such as manga artist Junji Ito. One such era is during the atrocities of World War II. The widely documented and horrific experiments of Joseph Mengele at the Auschwitz concentration camp were more disturbing than fiction. In the Pacific Theater, horrors were seen at the hands of the Japanese and the Allies alike. Across the burnt acres of Tokyo. And the retaliatory firebombings of Tokyo, along with the war-ending atomic bombing of Nagasaki and Hiroshima by the U.S., left a lasting legacy of devastation. Post-World War II humanity took a good hard look at itself to figure out what the hell just happened. Tribunals in Nuremberg and Tokyo were tasked with holding individuals accountable. In Germany, many of the top scientists were absorbed by American CIA operations by the controversial Operation Paperclip. While in Japan, it was more chaotic with various forces at play. The West considered the cruelty of Auschwitz and Birkenau to be the worst of the war. That was until researchers happened upon surviving documents and uncovered the true depth of Japanese atrocities, especially in northern occupied China. To understand the Japanese during this era, there are a few things essential to know about their history. For nearly two centuries, Japan was isolated under a policy of Sokaku of the Tokugawa shogunates. This policy was an effort to maintain domestic stability and prevent foreign influence. Emerging from it in the mid-1850s led to rapid modernization and westernization, quickly becoming a global power player by the early 1900s, able to defeat Imperial Russia. Socially, the Japanese maintained many of their traditions and a healthy level of xenophobia. Among the worst crimes Japan had committed were in the occupied Manchuria region by the unassuming Epidemic Prevention and Water Purification Department of the Kwantu Army, better known as Unit 731, a secret biological weapons and development unit whose main focus during the war was the use of prisoners in unimaginably inhumane medical experimentation. Men, women, and children were subjected to cruelty that words can't even do justice. Because of cultural issues, prisoners weren't thought of as human. Even infants born in captivity weren't spared. Testing would often be done under the unit's director, a devout Japanese nationalist, Shiro Ishii, a man who'd risen through the ranks quickly as an inventive doctor and studious researcher, with a singular focus on executing his assignment, which in this case was creating new mechanisms of death. Dangerous pathogens would be tested by injecting prisoners, who were then monitored and be subjected to forced blood draws, and in advanced cases, live subject vivisections. Frostbite research would be done by restraining the subject and leaving them in the extreme cold. They tested spread rates by infecting an individual and then placing them in a crowded cell, leaving the prisoners to fend for themselves, locked down until the virus had worked its course one way or another. Japan wasn't alone in its development of biological weapons. Allied and Axis forces alike stockpiled biological agents. However, there is little evidence that it was used to any significant scale in the European theater. However, in China, Japan routinely used them in efforts to wipe out the civilian population. The weapons of Unit 731 are crude by today's standard. Terracotta pots filled with layers of cloth, straw, and small explosives would be filled with fleas infected with bubonic plague, attached to a mid-altitude balloon or dropped by airships to spread and infect the wildlife and populations. The testing for these was inhumane by any measure, using prisoners tied to stakes at differing distances to find the maximum lethal range of the explosives without killing the fleas. Prisoners would often be locked in flea-infected cells to determine the infective potency. In one indescribably evil test, an infant who had been born to a prisoner was placed in a pot of fleas to see how quickly they would perish. Ishii had also taken the research a step further than just greeting weapons. He also experimented in treatment potential for Japanese soldiers. Like any army in World War II, STDs were a problem. 
So Ishii, in an effort to track treatments during various stages, would force infected prisoners to engage in sexual activity, or force female prisoners to be by infected officers. In researching battlefield amputation, prisoners would often have more and more removed from them to see how long they could survive and to what level of pain they could tolerate. Some would then have limbs reattached in the wrong places to see if they could regain function. They would be given wrong blood types. And in one exceptionally cruel experiment, they attempted to use turtle blood as a donation. When Japan surrendered after the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the Kwantu army, acting on orders from Tojo, set explosives in key areas of the facility, locked down, or shot the remaining prisoners. It was then set ablaze in an effort to cover up the unconscionable cruelty and utter disregard for human life. After the Allied occupation of Japan, Ishii, along with several other 731 members, were arrested by American forces. Ishii negotiated a deal for full disclosure for full immunity. While Soviet authorities had demanded that they be tried, a team of military microbiologists stated that the information was, quote, absolutely invaluable, and it could never have been obtained in the United States because of the scruples attached to experiments on humans, and that the information was obtained fairly cheap. World War II is undoubtedly the darkest era in the industrialized age. Millions killed because of extremist ideology and structural tribalism. So I know this was a history-heavy episode, so let me know what you think down in the comments. Please remember to like, smack around that subscribe button, click it right in the bells, and until next time, toodle.